Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lead Education and welcome to another tutorial on Java programming language. From this tutorial onwards, we're going to be starting or, you know, we're going to be learning about the object oriented programming in Java. In the previous tutorials, whatever we have learned is just the basic stuff, you know, explaining about some basic concepts in uh, programming. And from this tutorial onwards, the real fun begins or, you know, we're going to learn the important concepts of this Java. So as I told you before in the previous tutorial, this Java is an object oriented programming language, which is very famous, which is used for solving the complex problems. So in the previous tutorials, what we have done is, you know, we have uh, created some variables and then uh, we have created small, small programs and we have worked on that. But to be frank, in real world programming, we're not going to be writing simple, simple programs. And you know, we're not going to be solving simple problems. So to solve that kind of problems, we need to use the modern or, you know, the advanced programming approaches. And this object oriented programming is one of them. So here in this tutorial, uh, we're going to start learning about this object oriented programming in Java. And as a part of that, first, we're going to learn about the classes and objects in uh, object oriented programming. So uh, first of all, what are these classes? A class is a user defined data type or a blueprint or a template, which is going to contain the data and the actions that are going to be performed on that data. So this class is going to define a new data type where we're going to have uh, certain uh, information and the actions that we want to perform on that information in one place. The data that we're going to have in the classes are called as the properties or the attributes of that class. And then the actions that we're going to have in that class, which work on that data are going to be called as the actions or the behavior performed by that class. So now these classes are only the blueprint or the template. Once we have a class or the blueprint, we can create the instances from that blueprint and that instances are called as the objects. So a class is a user defined data type, which is going to contain data and the behavior of that data. And then the instances that we're going to create from that class or that blueprint are going to be called as the objects. So if it is confusing, don't worry, you know, when we see this more and more, it's going to be clear. So in this tutorial, the main purpose is I'm going to teach you guys how exactly create a class in our program and how to create the objects from that class. So now here I have this uh, project classes and objects and in that project, I have this source folder and inside that source folder, I have this package called oops. And inside that oops package, I have this tutorials class and this tutorial class is going to have this main meta. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another class in our program. So I'm going to select this oops package and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to new and then I'm going to select this class and then I need to give a name for my class. So here for the demonstration purpose, we're going to create a class which is going to store the student information and the actions performed on that student's information. So here, let me call my class as student. And then after that, just uh, click on this finish. And now you guys can see here, we have a class called student. And this student class is inside this oops package. So to define our class, first we need to use the modifier. And here we have this public. It means that our class is publicly available and we can access that from this tutorials or any other class which we have in our program. And then we have this class keyword which is used to define the classes. And then we have this class name which is student. And then we have a pair of curly braces. And between these curly braces, we're gonna declare the data for this class which are nothing but the properties or the attributes of this class. And then we're going to have the actions that are going to be performed on this data and they are called as methods. 
Now inside the student class we can declare properties of a student. So first we are going to declare some attributes or the properties for the demonstration purpose and uh, all of you know that every student has his own name. So name is going to be a property of a student. We are going to declare a string property here and before declaring a property we need to specify where this property is available whether it is available publicly or whether it is available only inside this class. So this is going to be our first tutorial on the classes and objects. So we're going to make it simple and that's why we're going to have the public property and to declare a public property we need to use the public keyword and then we need to declare a variable. So we're going to have the string type and that's why the data type is string and then the property name. So here this name is going to be an attribute or the property of this student class. Similar to this name property, we can declare other properties of the student. For example, every student has his own roll number. If you want, you can declare another property called roll number. And similarly, if you want to declare some more properties, you guys can do that. For the demonstration purpose in this tutorial, it's going to be enough. And the next thing that we're going to do is since we have the data in this class now, we're going to write the actions. So here we're going to declare a method and uh, to declare a method, first we have to write the modifier part and it's going to be public and we're not going to be using the static part if you have watched my previous tutorials because we're going to be creating an object of the student class in our program. So we're not going to be using the static keyword. If you're going to be using the static keyword, then it's going to mean that you don't have to create an object of this class to use that method. For example, inside this tutorials class, you guys can see here for this main method, we have used this static keyword. And uh, since we're not going to be creating an object from this tutorials class, we have to use this static keyword here. We're going to be creating an object of this student class and that's why we're not going to use the static keyword. And then we need to write the return type which is going to be void. We're not going to return any values and then we're going to have to write the method name. So let's say our student is going to introduce himself. So I'm going to call it as introduce and then we can have a pair of parentheses and then a pair of curly braces. Now this introduce method that we have uh, defined here is going to work on the data or the property or the attribute of this class. So here we're just going to use the value which is stored in this name attribute and I'm just going to use a print line statement. So it's going to be system dot out dot print line and then I'm just going to say hey. I am and then we're going to append this name property. So here this name is going to be the class attribute and since it is a class attribute, it is available inside this class. So we can access this name inside this introduce meta. Now we have created a simple class in our program which is called student and then we have declared an attribute or a property inside our class and then we have declared a meta which is going to work on that which is going to use the attribute of this class. So now you guys can see here the student class is going to act as a blueprint. Now by using this student class I can create as many instances that I want in my program or the student class is going to be like a data type from which I can declare as many variables I want. So now in order to use the student class in our program we need to instantiate from this student class or in other words we need to create the variables from this class and they are called objects. An object is nothing but an instance which is created from a class. Now all of you know that a Java program is going to start its execution from a main meta. Now inside the student class I don't have a main meta but in my 
in my tutorials class i have this main meta so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this student class as a template and create the instances in my main meta inside this tutorials class and i'm gonna build my program so here to create an object from a class first we need to write the class name we want to create an object from this student class and that's why here I'm gonna write student and then I need to give the name for my object so I'm gonna call it as anil and then we need to use the assignment operator and then we need to use the new keyword and then we need to write the class name again and then we need to use a pair of parentheses and then we need to use a semicolon now here this student which we have written first is gonna indicate the class from which we're gonna be creating this object called anil and then this new keyword is used to allocate the memory for the instance that we're gonna create here this student is gonna call the constructor of this class student which i'm gonna teach you in the upcoming tutorials so right now just remember that to instantiate an object from a class first we need to write the class name and then name for our object then we need to use the assignment operator then we have to use the new keyword and then we need to write that class name again and then we have to use a pair of parentheses so here now this anil is gonna be an object which is created from this student class so from this blueprint we are creating an instance so here for this student the memory is not gonna be allocated for this anil the memory is allocated so it's gonna be the blueprint or the template and from that blueprint or the template we are creating this object called anil which will contain its own memory space now this anil object is gonna contain all the elements of this student class so here we have this attribute name so this anil object is gonna contain an attribute called name and then we have this introduce method in this student class and this anil object is gonna contain that introduce method the next thing that we're gonna do is we haven't initialized this name attribute inside this template or inside this class so this anil objects name property or the attribute is not going to contain any value so what we want is we want to store some value inside that attribute so to do that first we need to write the object name which is anil and then we have to use the dot operator and then i have to write the property name that i want to access so here the eclipse is going to be uh, highlighting all the properties that i can access you guys can see here we have this name attribute i'm going to select that then i'm going to use the equal to symbol and i'm going to store a string value i'm going to say anil now anil objects name property is going to contain anil and then i can call this introduce method from this anil object so to call a method from an object we need to write the object name and then we need to use the dot operator and then we need to write the method name which is introduce so now we have successfully created a class in our program and then we have created an object from that class we have initialized a property using the object and we have called a method from that object now i'm gonna run this program and you guys can see here it says hey i'm anil now here this student class is gonna be the blueprint now by using this blueprint i can create as many objects that i want in my program for example i can create another object 
in my program by using that student class so to do that i need to write student and then i need to write the object name let's say it's gonna be money or money whatever the heck it is and then we're gonna use the equal to symbol and then we're gonna use a new keyword and then we need to write the class name which is student then a pair of parentheses and then a semicolon now we have this money as another object which we have created from this student class this anil is going to be stored in its own memory address and this money is going to be stored in its own memory address and this anil and money are created from one blueprint and that's why they're going to have all the features which we have declared in that blueprint and they're going to be independent of each other so here this anil object has a property called a name similarly this money object is also gonna have the property called name because they are being created from the same blueprint so here i'm gonna initialize the name property of this money object now so i'm gonna write money dot name equal to and then we're gonna store a string value let's call it as money you know the name and then i can call the introduce method so it's gonna be money dot introduce and then if i run this program you guys can see here hey i'm anil hey i'm money so this is about the basics of creating and using the classes and objects in our program now here we have uh, declared our student class with a property called name and we have declared a method called introduce inside that class another thing that i want you guys to teach you is in java when we create a class that class is gonna be inheriting another class called object this object class is gonna be the basic or the building block of any classes so by default it's gonna be done we don't have to worry anything about that and because of that our class student is gonna get some default properties and uh, methods which we're gonna learn in the upcoming tutorials so uh, this is about the classes and objects a class is nothing but a user defined data type or a blueprint or a template which is going to contain data or the properties and the actions that are going to be performed on that data or the properties and an object is nothing but an instance which is created from a class so this is it guys hope you guys have learned something about the classes and objects and you guys can get the source code of this tutorial in my website learninglad.com and you guys can uh, like my facebook page at facebook.com slash learninglad and also you guys can uh, tweet me on twitter at learningladedu and also if you guys think that you know you guys have learned something from this tutorial and it's gonna be helpful for others then please like this video and share it with your friends and that's it guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next tutorial